One of the things I first learned in NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, I probably read a few books on that. I can only imagine you're always reading and listening to books. You've probably done so much <laughs> NLP stuff, it's ridiculous. So you really are the perfect person to bring on for this. What is What does the phrase mean, the map is not the territory? Because when I learned that, it blew me away. I had never, and then I started to look at things different. So the map is not the territory. Yes. No. So the map is not the territory. A lot of people call this uh, one of the 12 laws of success or the 12 prepositions of NLP or 14 prepositions of NLP, depending on who you talk to. But uh, the map is not the territory. So if I laid out a map of the world and I said, Matthew, could you point to where you live? And you're like, I live right here. I live right here. You point to it. And I go, wow. So you're saying where you're pointing at on this piece of paper that is a map. That says the name of your town. You're saying you live in that little spot on the map. And we're like, well, well, well no. But, it, you know, like that's where I live if you were floating in space like Superman and you were going to. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? It's kind of bizarre. And so uh, people will say you think differently or you see the world differently. I'm like, I'm not the one looking at maps thinking that's my problem. That's where I live. Or No. Like we're creating illusions in our head that allow us to speak or to translate or to share information, language, uh, in a way that allows other people to understand. It's like, hey, I'm I'm in this weird addiction place or something like that. So the map is not the territory. And so one reason is I think a lot of people attack Alcoholics Anonymous for sobriety is, and I see this a lot with people that I work with, is that they get into story mode. Like, well... You know, like, like, well, tell me about this thing. So, for example, I'll, I'll ask a client, like, tell me about the first time you ever felt anger. And they're like, oh, anger is interesting. That reminds me of a story. And I'm like, okay, hold on. Before we get to the story, I just want to know when. Like, I don't want to know what was happening just yet. I just want to know when. What? When do you feel angry? What are the times? Where are the moments? Well, that's okay. Well, I feel it when I go to work. And, uh, you know, there's this guy at work. And he's such a jerk. And I'm like, okay, stop, 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 stop. We're going to story mode. And so one thing it's really difficult for people to start emotionally having sobriety is, is they start realizing that the stories they tell are not the actual event, but in their subconscious mind, they're re-anchoring and reconditioning themselves to this thing. And so the map is not the territory is, is that our words, when I say, you know, I was in the military and I had PTSD and I saw these terrible things. Let me tell you a story about this. My story isn't the actual event. My story is a map hmm. of the territory. Uh, and my story is a map of the actual event. And so a lot of people will go, no, no, my story, that's exactly what happened. And then you'll meet other people that were there. And they're like, well, that's not 100% of what happened. This is what I saw. You know, and it's okay. Well, that's, maybe that, that is who knows, but you have all these different maps. So which map do you listen to? Which reality do you listen to? And it's really about you having to test and retest and reflect to know what your reality is, what is truth for you, and then go out there and test it, you know, really put, you know, the rubber to the road and go, Hey, like, I want to test my parachute out before I jump out of the airplane. Um, is a good way of putting it. So I, I, I say that to people, the map is not the territory because your story is not the actual event. The, I, I love the movie Star Wars, but Star Wars is not real. It's a fantastic yeah. movie, but you know, everyone's like, did you see that scene where like Luke Skywalker's hanging on the thing and he's like, I am your father. And you're like, oh my God, you know, like, well, in reality, there was a cut and there was like a guy with a cigar. And he's like, all right, everybody brunches in the trailer. You know, you're like, all right, and George Lucas is yelling at somebody. You're like, that was the reality of it. So we got to see a really great story, edited, clipped to create this illusion that entertains us. So that's not reality. It's a map, and we like that map, the Star Wars. But when we come out of it, we really start going, hey, how can I test this? How can I evaluate this? We start going, oh, I need to do something different in my life. You know, I can take some lessons from Star Wars, like be, be a good friend, you know, take, be there to help 
catch people or, you know, achieve great things when you're together with your friends. You know, it's not all about Luke Skywalker. It's about Luke Skywalker and his friends and these people coming together to do something. And, uh, which I think is really beautiful. And it's like, well, okay, well let's, let's create a story that happens after your story about anger, where you're a pissed off, angry person. Let's create a new map of you finding your friends, you finding your family, you finding your sobriety. And then let's look at how that story would change the reality of your life. And then, so maybe if we start changing our maps, we'll start changing our territory. And that's really one of the basis that, uh, NLP was formed around. If we change our language and our stories that we can actually change the results and outcomes of our life. That's marvelous right there. <laughs> Hope and that was, that was actually, a long, long explanation, but and sorry for interrupting, but that's really uh, the, the, the basis of, of most NLP. I'm glad that you went so in depth because really that's, if we're going to define reality and I think it was necessary to put in-depth information on the map is not the territory because I needed some review on it. My, my definition was way different. So I'm glad I didn't say anything. <laughs> my definition was something like, you know, everyone views life through their own individual, completely customized lenses of reality that has been shaped by their just individual experiences who raised them, where they were at the community, the books, the movies. So everyone's version of, life of you know life itself and then relationships even with addiction there's specific maps and territories about addiction like the way i view addiction is very different than a lot of people you mm -hmm. know and there's a lot of people that view it uh, either exactly like me or very similar but that's one of the crazy things going on right now is there's so many views on addiction well the underlying thing is trauma the underlying root cause is neurotransmitter imbalances. The underlying main cause is genetics. And if you're predisposed, the underlying cause is people that have the high sensation seeking innate trait, or it's a combination of these things. And I used to be pretty uh, fixated on, oh no, this is it. But with more emotional maturity over time, and the more I learn, what I realize is the more I learn and the more emotional sobriety I get, the less certain I am about things and the more like I'm not attached to these beliefs anymore. They're not like these strong convictions because I'm always trying to upgrade them. Mm -hmm. If I find new stuff that cancels out one of my current beliefs about the world or about addiction or about people or about something, if there's a new belief that sounds resonates more and sounds better. Maybe try that one out, test it out. And th meanwhile, I have, many friends that have not, hardly ever changed anything about themselves. You know, I, I'm thinking of one particular person, I won't name his name, <laughs> but he's the same as he was when he was a teenager, same jackass that he was when he was 17. You know, he's, he's changed somewhat, but really it's like just a tiny bit more mature yeah. version of that. All right. So we got the map is not the territory <laughs> and you see this all the time on social media, YouTube comments where people are arguing, arguing about this and that and why don't they see it this way they're such fucking morons how could they think this the other people are like no you're the damn morons blah 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 blah, blah. and so right. there's just all this emotion and uh, emotional attachment to it it's ego investment mm -hmm. their ego is literally attached to their beliefs so when people attack their beliefs their convictions they feel attacked and their ego doesn't want to be attacked it wants to defend there's the anger, there's mm -hmm. the other negative emotions. So it's really important for people to understand one, that people view reality different. And two, that your version of reality is that is all of that is, is your version of reality. It may be more correct to the map than certain other people's, but really, so that's a, a huge one. And then what else did we say after that? After the map is not the territory. Here we go. Yeah. If I could say, say I know yeah, exactly please. so many friends that you just said it like they, the world grows up, the world changes, but they stay the same. Um, but mm -hmm. it's like, uh, and then I see, uh, you know, like you, you're telling us Kate causes of, of addiction. And I'm like going, you know, I just, it breaks my heart when I see people who, you know, they're, they, they feel shame in their life or they get other people will shame them for getting drunk or there's a family member is like, Oh, you're drunk again. You're stoned again. You, you know, you piece of shit. And, you know, they kind of like 
berate and like, dude, why can't you get clean? What's your problem? And it's like, you know, I just really wish that we could have more compassion to say like, oh, you got drunk again. Okay, well, come in. Let me make you a burrito. But we're going to talk about this when, when you get when you get sober tomorrow. You know, hey, there's going to we got to have a conversation about this because uh, the number one thing is, is if somebody is I'll use an NLP term, which is they're motivated by uh, moving away from pain. You know, like we, we all we all have away from pain motivation or um, towards pleasure motivation. And so if someone's really strong away from pain and they're like, I'm away from pain motivated, I just want to I'm hurting, I'm in pain. And then they use drugs because they're motivated. They want to get away from their pain. And then here you are coming along, giving them more pain. Guess what? They're going to want to have more drug use. They're going to want to keep doing that. And so, uh, you know, my, I just scream it to like, please, you know, uh, hug those people in your family. Let them know that you want them there, that you need them there, that you love them. Because um, regardless of whether it's trauma, genetics, this stuff, you know, like you, you gotta love the addict. You gotta love the sinner, and, and you know you gotta hold them, and hold their hand, make them a you know make them some food, and uh, you know it I, it breaks my heart because then that will maybe not right away, but eventually this person will start seeing that their map of the territory doesn't really match. They're like, oh man, like my mom's really not a bitch. I'm, my my dad's really a good dad, you know, or man, my friends are really good friends. They, I, I was the, you know, my map was the map of being in denial. Oh, mm-hmm. it's like, uh, it's okay, buddy. We've all been in denial. We are on the other side of the wall. We built the ladder. Come on. You know, <laughs> we're having a pizza party, you know, and we'll get sober next week. You know, like don't, don't we're going to get there together. Don't worry. And I feel like that's a conversation that, uh, most people who are facing addiction don't get to have or um, don't aren't willing to have not so much the family, but the, the addicted person themselves at times, they don't get to have that conversation. 